please. Please, time to be off to work. Come on, back to it. Turning us birds on like that. <laughs> I'll shut your face, will you? That's enough, Janice. Come along, will you? Yes, Miss. Come on, yes. Come on, Miss Bennett. Okay, about the what's it? Come on, will you? Come on, uh, hurry up. I don't know. Of course you do. If you're Janice, Janice. Come along, please. Come on. Come on. We haven't got all day. Janice Quinn and Irene Sugden have been fighting. Oh, Janice again. Well, she denies it, of course, but you know what a liar she is. And Irene's certainly got a mark on her face, so I filled in an injury report. Have another word with them both. Dr Mays has joined us this morning because he has a slight problem with Molly Carter. If you'll excuse my saying so, Governor, Molly's no problem. I only wish the others were as little trouble. Well, in Molly's case, a little more trouble would be healthier. Our aim isn't a group of apathetic zombies. <laughs> no, Governor. Apart from the devoted attachment she's formed for our medical colleague here, she shows no interest in anything or anybody. Yeah, well, I'm afraid that it's not my uh, undeniable charm to which she's attracted. It's rather the services that I represent. You see, when Molly first came in here, she was desperately in need of a complete health check. And uh, she'd never seen the inside of a dentist's surgery. She'd never had her eyes tested, in spite of the fact that she suffers from severe headaches. As a matter of fact, the only medical attention she can remember having was the midwife who attended her confinement. <laughs> Nevertheless, there was nothing seriously wrong with her. Oh, no, Miss Flaxon, no, nothing serious. She'd just put up for years with the kind of thing that sends most people rushing to the GP. And she'd put up with it because she didn't want to waste the doctor's time. She didn't think she was important enough to bother him. And now she bothers you every other day. No, not bother. No, I, I'm not worried about it in that sense of the word. And anyway, most of the things she comes to see me about now are trivial. I mean, yesterday it was just a sore toe. But I'm concerned about a wider implication. You see, for the first time, that woman is aware that she has a body and that it matters. And now it's up to us to make her aware that she has a mind too and a personality and that they matter. Yeah. How much longer have we got her? Uh, till the end of January. Oh. She's got six months with a suspended sentence running concurrent. No loss of remission so far. Well, I'm very grateful to you, Doctor, for bringing this to our notice. That gives the rest of us just over six weeks to change her. To get to know her. <laughs> to see you on Saturday. How did it go? I think the lousy pig's behaving himself. I told him I'd tie a knot in it if he ain't. <laughs> Murder. Mm. Molly. Afternoon, madam. From the family? <laughs> this? No, ma'am. One of the girls said I could have it. Now, may I? Mountains in Provence by Paul Cezanne. Did you ask for this? She had a lot of different ones. She was throwing them away. She was going out. No, what I meant was, did you choose this particular card? It's a nice picture. It's a beautiful picture. I admire your taste. Well, now 
ask you something, miss. What is it this time? What happens to people who break the rules? <laughs> Depends. Which particular rules had you in mind? But say someone's sneaking a letter out for one of the women, miss. Well, if they're on the staff, they're liable to instant dismissal. Rhoda, you know that perfectly well. I just wanted to make sure, miss. Oh, hey, uh, did I tell you about the tablecloth? Yes. It's Miss Flowers is letting me enter it for the prize. Yes, I know. Why did you want to know about letters? Oh, well, like I said, miss. Just interested. Why did she choose that particular postcard? She told you. She thought it was a nice picture. Something must have attracted her to it. Or well, perhaps the others were all saucy, fat ladies with balloon bums. You think I'm clutching at straws? I think, Governor, that perhaps you're in danger of over-interpreting a fairly simple reaction. Look, she doesn't want to attend any of the night school courses. She's opted out of occupational therapy, hasn't been near the library. Not even seeing the doctor as often as she was. In other words, you're saying there's nothing else we can do? She does her work. In many respects, she's a model prisoner. We have to be realistic. It's a pity I can't wave a magic wand and wipe out 30 years of hard background. I have to take the woman as she is. And all you have is a postcard. And patience. Something else I've learned, Mr. Radley. I can't afford not to be positive. That's a useful word. How positive can we be about Janice Quinn? The reverse side of the coin. Hostile and aggressive to the staff. Bullies and antagonizes the other women. Uh, eventually, we'll have to give her solitary for her own protection. I'd hoped psychotherapy would help. A waste of time. She's too damn crafty. Used the psychotherapist to get concessions she couldn't get from us. I've been in this job long enough now to know that there are times when we have to accept defeat. I've seen women who've been in and out of this prison who will eventually die in this prison beyond any rehabilitation. But Janice is 22. Can we write her off just like that? Obviously, Charles Radley has rather more austere standards. But he has. He can be pretty uncompromising in his attitude. But he's always been scrupulously fair until now. Perhaps he's not behaving out of character. Perhaps he's behaving in character. A man doesn't suddenly become defeatist, reactionary. He doesn't lose his sheer enthusiasm without a reason. Well, there's a reason. Personal. Why, necessarily? Because if it was anything within the prison, I'd know. Mistress of all she surveys. A prison is a closed community bill for us just as much as for the others. Well, then ask the Radleys to dinner. Doesn't that sound rather underhand? To invite them just to pry? No, we're not. It's time we had them round anyway. Your trouble, Madam Governor, is you've been spoilt. I haven't noticed. Oh, but you have. Being married to a fair-minded, tolerant man all these years has set you an impossibly high standard. The other poor beggars can't compete. You think there is some substance in these tales of hers? It's possible, madam. I mean, Rhoda does seem to know what she's talking about. And you're convinced they're worth an investigation? Well, if it won't waste too much of your time, madam. Yes. Well, let's have her in then, shall we? Good morning, Mrs. Boswell. Now, Rhoda, Miss Berriman tells me that you say that there are some drugs in one of the women's rooms. That's right, madam. What sort of drugs? I've no idea. I don't involve myself in that sort of filth. Very well. Will you please tell me whose room? Oh, I couldn't grasp, madam. Couldn't you? I gather you've also spoken of a woman who's got a considerable amount of money hidden on her. A fiver at least she must have. She keeps it in her knickers. Who does? You realise that these are very serious charges, that if you are not prepared to substantiate them by giving me full details, there's really no point in you wasting my time nor that of my staff. Thank you, madam. It was very good of you to see me, madam. Oh, I do like the new curtains. I'm glad you approve. Oh, oh I could have done a better job on the hems, mine. Miss Flowers says I'm the neatest sewer she's ever had in the therapy class. She's letting me enter for the prize this year. That's splendid. I suggest you devote all your time to that in future, unless on letting your imagination run riot. Thank you, madam. Uh, thank you, madam. Good morning. Miss Berriman. 
In a prison of this size, there's always a great deal of gossip and rumour mongering. But we must learn to sort out fantasy from fact. Yes, madam. Now, Rhoda has a history for this sort of thing. Most of it is pure invention, dreamed up for the sole intention of getting herself into the limelight. Well, you saw it just now. Yes, madam. Now, there's a very thin line between encouraging gratuitous tale-telling and missing an item of importance. And that's something that's not covered by any rule book. It's an instinct that we must all learn to develop. I understand, madam. I've been to see Mrs. Boswell. She wanted my opinion of her new curtains. Do you do sewing? I did have a machine. I don't know. I don't mean by machine. I mean by hand. Embroidery. As Flowers is entering me for the Cursor Award. Arts and Crafts section. You must have seen my cloth. I don't go to therapy. Please come, I'll show you my cloth. A work of art, Miss Shut Flowers. up about that bloody thing, will you? <laughs> How was the playgroup? Exhausting. Quite fun. What on earth is this? Our new wallpaper? Potato art. Oh. Caroline did it. It's a present for Auntie Beth. That was kind. You must be joking. Little Caroline's a four-year-old candidate for your illustrious establishment. Oh, dear. Poor little Caroline. Written off at the tender age of four. I was politely carpeted for doing that yesterday. Oh? Hmm. Well, the governor. Oh, they've invited us for dinner on Saturday night, by the way. Oh. And I said it'd be all right. Yes. Well, we are free. Oh, Claire and Philip. It was last Thursday. Oh, well, I did tell you it was impossible yes, for me course. that night. Yes, of course. Besides, this is your career, business. They were just my friends. Don't give a damn about my career. Not like that. I know. You go on as though I was some kind of supercharged, ambitious monster. Well, I wish you were. At least there'd be some point. There is a point, Beth. But you don't want to understand. So who did you write off? Huh? Well, you said you'd been carpeted. Oh, it was rather more subtle than that. Mrs. Boswell didn't actually say. She implied that I was giving up on one of our more difficult inmates. Doesn't sound like the Charles Radley I know used to love. What was the case? Oh, it doesn't matter. No, I'm interested. Are you? Girl of 22, convicted prostitute. Been soliciting since she was 12. Got a record as long as your arm for everything you can think of. And a few you can't. Currently doing five years. She decoyed a bloke in a pub. Her boyfriend mugged him. She stood there. She may even have lent a helping foot. Either way, the bloke wound up with a ruptured spleen, a fractured spine, and lost the side of one eye. Oh, that's ghastly. Yeah. The girl must be evil. <laughs> oh, no, Beth. You don't understand. It's not as simple as that. All over a bloody sewing machine. 
Begging your pardon, madam. But you did sell it, Molly. And it wasn't yours to sell. It belonged to the hire purchase company. But I owed the club man as well. And he was turning real nasty. You can't rob Peter to pay Paul. And the time before that, the time they gave me a, a suspended sentence, he'd left me. I'd a right to go on the security. You also had a right to let them know that he'd come back, but you didn't. You went on claiming the money. I needed it. You've got three children all working. The lads still run short in the middle of the week. You know how lads are. I'd sub them a few bob. How about your daughter? She's 19, our Sheila. And a lovely girl. They all comment. She's a real fashion plate. Every week something new. From the clothing club. I like to see her looking nice. I never grudged her. It's not a question of grudging, Molly. You couldn't afford it. You should have been honest with them. I didn't like to say no. Discipline isn't a dirty word, Molly. It means caring, loving a child, to prepare him properly for his place in the world outside, not indulging him so much that he expects everything to be handed to him on a plate the way your children have had it from you. Do you understand that? Yes, madam. I think so. What about your husband? Didn't he realize you were getting into debt? He never asked. Yes, well, most husbands are like that to a certain extent. But if we simply can't cope, it's up to us to tell them, isn't it? I suppose. Molly, you've been here almost three months. And this is the first time that you've made a private application to see me. I'm sorry, madam. I'm delighted. What? Yes. And joining the occupational therapy group, I think, is a splendid idea. I only wish you'd done it before. Didn't seem no point. Why do you say that? Well, they teach you things there. I'm getting on. I'm nearly 50. Your children have grown up now, and you've got a whole new life of your own to lead. I can't think of a better time for you to learn new things. It had something to do with what you said about that postcard. Why, you changed your mind? There were dozens of them, but I picked that one. Not because he was a famous artist. Cezanne. What? Cezanne. Hmm. Never even heard of him. I just liked it. But it was that I'd chose something, decided, not for the house or the kids, for me. Escort duty tomorrow. Oh, no. Where this time? Uh, Lincoln, Maureen Collins. Oh, she should be pleased at any rate. How long has she been on remand? Oh, three and a half months. Up at the crack of dawn again. Will you be thankful there's 15 on escort tomorrow? It's going to be merry hell here. I'm sure you'll cope. Oh, of course. Isn't it lucky we all love working a 14 hour day? <laughs> Hello, Miss Harker. Hello, Rhoda. Well, uh, how's the famous tablecloth coming? Oh, a treat, Miss. Well, best of luck with it. Oh, thank you very much indeed, Miss Harker. Janice, thank would you, you do I'm that in your own Appreciate it. Oh, she will. You shut your face, you silly bitch. All right, you two, that's quite enough. Oh, she's such a creeper. She gets on my wick. She's just jealous because she spoke to me. It's part of her job, you stupid cow. Janice, you know nobody cares about, about you. you. Not her, not the governor, not nobody. Nobody gives a bloody damn. Look nice when it's finished. No man keeping me in now. Yes, I know your appeal's been turned down, but I did warn you not to be too optimistic. What's he getting up to while I'm stuck in here, though? Who's he going out with for? I'll speak to Welfare. What can she do? Have him doctored? Oh, no, I tell him. Calm down. We'll talk about it later. I'm sure you're worrying about nothing. Come on. Hello, Rhoda. Brought Mr. Adley to see your tablecloth. Ah, it's very nice. Imagine spilling tea on that. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? She should win a prize with that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what we keep saying. Don't we, Miss Flowers? Yes, we do. But she's got to finish it first. Mm -hmm. 
Well, where is it then? I can't. Can't? If you know I don't, I'd lose my job. You've taken three letters out for me already, mate. And I can prove it. If they get to hear about that, you've lost your lousy job anyway. How would they hear about it? Guess. Well, they do you too. What could they do they haven't done already? I'm here anyway, Tiger. I've got nothing to lose. Well, come along, everybody. Time's up. Exercise over. Come along. Come along. And you too. Okay. I'll do it tonight. Good lad. I knew you'd not let your Auntie Janice down. It's Molly Carter's husband, Governor. He insists on seeing you. What about? Oh, he wouldn't tell me. They had a visit, then he came storming out, demanding to see that one in charge. I see. The officer sent for me. I told him he'd have to make an appointment, but he'd no listen. Well, I'd better see him then, hadn't I? Oh, he ought to make a proper appointment. Well, I happen to be here, so I might as well find out what the problem is, don't you think? Aye, of course. The Governor can spare you five minutes. I should think so, too. I want to make a complaint. Do sit down, Mr. Carter. What garbage have you been telling my wife? None that I know of. She said you told her it was my fault. She got into trouble. That's a lie. I asked her why you hadn't realised that she was in trouble until it was too late. Why couldn't she manage disgracing us all like that? I gave her enough. Did you really ever bother to find out just how much the housekeeping bills were? I'm the breadwinner, not the flaming housekeeper. That's her job. I tell you, Mrs. She's nothing to complain of. We had a nice house, car, telly. You paid for the car. Me? Come out of my wages each week. And the television? Her? Well, she wanted the thing, didn't she? You want things like that, you have to make a few sacrifices. Even if it means that you can't pay the bills at the end of the week. I tell you, that woman's hopeless. Hopeless, that's the top and bottom of it. She's brought up three very fine children. The welfare officer tells me that your home is spick and span, extremely comfortable. I don't exactly call that hopeless. Aye, well, that were all that interested her, weren't it? Cooking and cleaning and that. Did you ever ask her? Ask her what? If she was interested in anything else. Did you ever take her out, for instance? Where to? Well, wherever you went. You have a car. I presume you went out in it sometimes. Well, of course I went out. You can't just sit in the house every night. Well, then, did you ask her to go with you? She'd only have said the same thing. What was that? That she'd nothing to wear. It's my chair. I don't see he's got your name. I... I tell Mrs. Boswell, I know all about you. Which suit are you wearing? What? Suit. Huh. That shouldn't take too long to decide. The blue or the grey? Blue one, then. It used to make you look rather distinguished. Used to. You still do. The suit doesn't. It's time you got a new one. 
we could uh, go and have a look round next weekend. Why? Nothing wrong with this. Besides, there are more important problems on my mind than buying a new suit. Problems. It's your favourite word. A nice outfit. New? Yes, it is. And yes, it is. There is a world outside Stone Park, Charles. I'm not arguing. There are other things in life besides refereeing two Hellcats clawing each other's eyes out. They didn't, I told you. The other women saw to that. I don't like trouble. I thought they'd enjoy a good old Barney. Blokes in prison do. Anything to relieve the monotony. Prisons don't have a monopoly on monotony. And you try saying that after a couple of gins. <laughs> We're going out tonight. Yes, that's true, to dinner with your boss. If you didn't want to go, you should have said so. Why, what would you have done? Made an excuse? I'd have had to. <laughs> I could have supplied you with a few. I've built up a whole repertoire of believable lies for us not turning up over the years. Oh, it's not been as bad as that. No, but it's beginning to get worse than that. Oh, the men have jobs which aren't nine to five. Or a mistress. I could compete with that. How do you compete with 200 inadequate women? We'd better call it off. Do I have to go whoring or half-blind a man to qualify for some of your compassion? I'll phone them. Why? The Boswells are expecting us. And you aren't a man who lets people down. Are you, Charles? Night, Mary. Night, Mary. Night, Mary. Night, Mary. Night, Mary. Night, Mary. I absolutely adore airports. <laughs> you wouldn't if you'd spend as much time in them as I do, Mrs. Radley. Oh, but yes, all those people rushing off to exotic places. Birmingham, Newcastle, <laughs> Dusseldorf. <laughs> I'm afraid Beth doesn't enjoy being disillusioned, Mr. Boswell. She prefers to think of you jetting off to Acapulco. I prefer to think of me jetting off to Acapulco. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you ever wish you could go with him? To Dusseldorf? Mm. Sometimes. I would. Anywhere. A romantic. A sybarite. Take it from me, Mrs. Radley. All a commuting businessman ever sees of glamorous foreign parts are the insides of taxis, conference rooms and hotels. Oh, super. Sybarites love hotels. Elegant, lush, blissful. Anonymous, functional, lonely. Ah. <laughs> now there's a word I recognise. Tell me, Mrs. Boswell, is that why you took up prison work? Because your husband's away so much? Well, I didn't exactly take it up instead of knitting, if that's what you mean. <laughs> Couldn't have. She's a lousy knitter. <laughs> Did you feel you had a vocation? Oh, Charles a, has, no. hadn't you, darling? That's fine. Hmm? A vocation? Uh, oh, it's just a job. We sometimes feel we can do reasonably well, and often know we can't. I think outsiders <laughs> like us have to accept it's a way of life, Mrs. Radley. They have their own mistake. We're wiser not to pry. <laughs> do you ever get the chance? I don't. To pry? To question. To criticise. My wife has her own opinions on how the prison service should be run. Well, I'd be surprised if she hadn't. I mean, why do you allow them to wear their own clothes, for instance? I think that's ridiculous. Oh, no. do, do, do we want to go into this just now? You don't mind, do you, Mr Boswell? Oh, I'm used to it. I did say it's a way of life. They use makeup. They go to night school. It's really more like a holiday camp than a place of punishment. To be deprived of freedom is in itself a tremendous loss, Mrs. Radley, especially for a woman. Women don't take too kindly to discipline. Well, they wouldn't be there if they hadn't broken the law, would they? <laughs> Beth won't be happy till they bring back the rack and the thumbscrews. <laughs> don't be absurd, Charles. It's just that I don't see how going to the other extreme and pampering them acts as any kind of deterrent. Prison's no joyride, I can assure you. There's no privacy, no locks on the loose, unpleasant duties to be performed. But informed help can still be the most effective deterrent. Teaching them to make cuddly toys? If that's the therapy they need, yes. Being in prison gives a woman time to think about what went wrong. We have a woman at the moment. No prison record until she was 48. Unfulfilled. She became obsessed about her children. She indulged them. Then they grew up. They didn't need her anymore, except for money. 
What about her husband? Oh, they can't talk to each other. <laughs> For him, she's just part of the furniture. <laughs> Sounds like every husband I've ever met. More coffee, anyone? I will, a bloody will. She'll see. Oh, that was a super meal, Mrs. Boswell. Thank you. I'd love the recipe for that noose thing. <laughs> You'll have to ask Bill for that. I think it's one of the things he brought back from Dusseldorf. <laughs> Mrs. Boswell, I owe you an apology. I behaved very badly. Not to me. I shouldn't have made you witness our private vendetta. Only he's got so much integrity. And that's one of the hardest things to forgive. It creates such an impregnable defence. It's like turning the other cheek. But one's still left with the frustration. Oh, yes. <laughs> that keeps on growing. I don't underestimate his strengths, Mrs. Boswell. In anyone else, I'd admire them enormously. But in a husband, they can be hell. They can. You happen to be weak, selfish, and demanding like me. Your description or his? Oh, no, mine. Oh, I do at least know myself that well. It's a very tiny virtue. I'm not the stuff martyrs are made of. Would Charles want to be married to a martyr? It's what he needs. A woman who will sacrifice herself entirely to the demands of his job. Those women that you were talking of, well, of course I know they deserve pity and help. But I resent them, Mrs. Boswell. I'm jealous of them. but I'm not prepared to listen to any more of your tales. I'm not lying this time, Miss. It's true this time. I hoped you'd stopped all that nonsense, Rhoda. God's honour. Oh, the bottle of gin she's got. She keeps it in her jacket pocket. Oh. Here, you, you can take me to the Governor, Mrs Boswell will believe me. Come on, Miss Berry. You're not wasting her time again. Oh, no, I won't. I swear I won't. This time I'll give her names, everything. Janice Quinn, come with me. Where? The Governor wants to see you. Big deal. What for? Well, she'll tell you that when you get to her office. You too, Rhoda. Not me? What the hell? She's done it, Janice. She's grasped on you. Come on, you two, right away. I won't! I've had enough! Oh, Janice, stop oh, that nonsense to come out at once. You come and get me. You come in here, and I warn you. I'll do myself an injury. I've got scissors here! She is? I see. Don't do anything. I'll be there right away. Find Mr. Radley, wherever he is. Ask him to go over to the North Wing therapy room immediately. Oh, and you better find Dr. Mays, too. I'll do myself in. I swear it! You there, are you, Rhoda? Can you hear me? Here! You know that famous tablecloth of yours? The one you've been working on for months. 
Well, it's in here, Rhoda. It's in here with me. Come on, Rhoda. You won't win any prize after all, Rhoda. Not when I've done with it. Come on. All right, now, come on. It's all right. I want you to open this door at Mrs. once. She won't have done it from here. She's too busy tearing up Rhoda's cloth. And has she said anything? Well, she says she's going to do herself in. She has got scissors in there. I say she was bluffing. She thinks she means it, but she won't do it. What she really wants is help. Well, let's get the door open, then. No, it's not the door that's the problem. No, breaking the door down won't do any good. It's a risk. It might be. I can't take the chance. No, I agree. Janice, I want you to listen to me. Whatever the problem is, I can help you sort it out, but not this way. I've not got no problem. We can at least talk. It's too late. Who'd I talk to anyway? You? You've got nothing to say I want to hear, missus. Well, I think she's enjoying the fuss. Do you? Well, we're all here waiting to help her. She just won't listen. Not won't. Can't. Will you try? <laughs> I'll try. What do you think, Doctor? Yeah. Yeah, all right, it might work. Janice, will you talk to Mr. Radley? What do I want to talk to that Burke for? He's one of your lot, isn't he? I don't want to listen to what he's got to say. I know it already. Janice, this is Charles Radley. Look, I, I don't know that I want to listen to what you've got to say either, but I'm prepared to risk ten minutes of my time if you are. Crafty madam, then. Still down to you, Janice. Too right, Charlie boy. Because I've no intention of being putty in your great big masculine mitts. Oh, I wouldn't underestimate you that much, Janice. Come then. True. But even if conning would work, which I doubt, I'd be the very last one to try. Yeah? Because I'm a fella. And you haven't got much time for fellas, have you, Janice? Meaning I'm a les? So. No. Well, come on then, sweetheart. Makes sense. I'm a brass. I'm the best in the business. Fellas is how I make my bread. That's a very good reason for hating their guts. OK. So why you? Why not her or the AG? It's an all-female establishment. Male depths are probably considered expendable. Look what I did to Rhoda's cloth. Yeah. You are? Well, what? It was a bloody lousy thing to do. You're supposed to be humouring me. Who said? Well, that's what all do-gooders like you do with nutters like me, isn't it? Oh, I'd have perched on a ledge 60 feet up, only there wasn't one handy. Oh, I'd probably have had to humour you if you'd been hysterical. But you're not. You know exactly what you're doing. Yeah. Now I do. What happened? Don't know. They said governor wants you, Quinn. I suppose it was over the booze. Oh, I don't give a monkeys about that. I mean, what could they have done? Loss of pay? Loss of privilege? Loss of remission? I've had the lot anyway. You just got choked. Right. It's like you go on. 
taking it. And bloody taking it. And then you can't. So you shut yourself up in a room and threaten to commit suicide? So it's you taking the action. It's like you said. Even if it is only for five minutes, it gives you a lift. You married? Yeah. What's her name? Beth. Beth? Coffee mornings, homemade buns, and our kids have got the whitest shirts in town. No kids. Happy, eh? Like everyone. Sometimes. Oh, it's a mug's game. Marriage? Don't make you any less on your own. There's still only you there inside your skull. I suppose it's... having someone to share things with. Do me a favour, will you? Like, share what? Loneliness. How? Talk. People don't talk. They just swap words. It's a big con. It's the system. Then fight the system. Yeah? What with? All the weapons you've used against us here. You've been fighting the wrong battles. Make good dusters. <laughs> yeah. The problem is, I'm a realist. And someone. Someone? A person. What person? You. The you inside your head. Yeah? So who knows that? Hey? Eh? Me? I've seen before in approved schools amongst the young, but seldom so intensive. I suppose her intelligence makes it even worse. Ever since she was a child, she's never known any security. Her whole life has been one long succession of uncles, picking her up one minute, dropping her the next. You were probably the first man in her entire life to pay any attention to her as a person. I wasn't too aware of that at the time. If Liza Manelli had been in there doing a full bit, I doubt if I'd have noticed. I was too busy keeping an eye on those damn scissors. <laughs> oh, by the way, Gary Lennox has coughed and is being dealt with. Oh, good. I thought you said you had at least another couple of hours' work. Decided enough's enough for one night. Time? No more than usual. Which means that you're tired. Exhausted would be a better word. Admitting it, too. Peter Pan is growing up. Oh. <laughs> Just older. Got involved in a situation today. A girl. Her isolation was so... Shut herself up in a room. 
threatened to commit suicide. And? Oh, that's all. How old? 22. Good God, she's got time. Never enough time. When she was 12 years old, it was already too late. Who is she? Oh, just a woman. The mugger's girlfriend. That one? That one. Now I understand. Couldn't wait until you found a reason, could you? Something to justify her, something you could pity. Just being plain evil, bad. That's no use to you because you need to be needed. Don't you? <sighs> it's the first time you've ever asked me that. Well, go on. Get on with it. Won't get done with you sat there looking at it, will it? I can just hear him. Every time we have a bust up, he'll chuck it in my face. Jailbird. Does it matter, Molly? How do you mean? Yes, he'll probably say that. And what will you say? What you said in the past? Was it drink? Going out without you? Did you accuse him of having other women, being a bad father? We wives fling all these things at our husbands and more. But Molly, you have been in prison and you've coped. And believe me, if you can cope with that, you can cope with anything that you may have to face outside. But he's my husband. And you're his wife, but you're also Molly Carter. And it's up to you to decide. That's right. Feeling a little bit better. It's much better, thank you, madam. Not quite so worried? Well, of course I'm worried. But I'll cope. God knows how, but I bloody will. Oh, begging your pardon, madam. <laughs>